Hello there and glad you find this video on how to work with pixel art illustration. I'm going to show you how we work with Corel Photo Paint and Corel Photo Paint is part of Corel Graphics Suite. And my name is Stefan Lindblad and I'm an illustrator and I'm based in Stockholm, Sweden. In front of you, you see a lot of pixels and pixel art is just what it says in the name. It's pixels art. And of course, when we work with programs like Corel Photo Paint and all the equivalent programs, we always work with pixels. But the difference here is that pixel art is something that comes from the early age of computer gaming when they created all these graphics for computer games with limited technology. So the images were very simple, hence the, the pixel feel. So when we're working with images for, for movies today or um, image adjusting a, a photograph or something like that. We work in uh, with pixels, yes, but we work with much higher resolution and larger sizes and all that. So we are using the small sizes in creating pixel art to our advantage. And especially when we're creating a pixel art image, we have to think if we're going to use it. And in this case, I'm going to show you how to use it when we wanted to go to print in a magazine. Because when we're working with sizes like this one here, and we want to create an image and this technique and give this feel of the pixels, the outlines and the whole thing, and this style, we have to work in small sizes before we go big. And you know how people say that it's better to go down in size? This time we're going to go up in size. And we're going to be keeping the sharpness of the picture so we can do that, the sharpness of the picture, but I'm going to show you how we do that later on in this video. So the size here is 250 by 250. That's a square like a pixel itself. And I also set this resolution to 150. You can choose below or higher that suit you. But remember, you have to go small size if it's going to work to your benefit and then click OK. What we want to also have to do is to um, go to view. You can see that I have a ruler already in view, but many times when you start Corel Photo Paint, you um, go with a ruler that is not viewable. So you have to um, set that so we can see it, but also something called grid, of course. And now we see a grid, but that's not the kind of grid setting that we want. So you go to the ruler and right click and depending on uh, if you have a Windows or a Mac version of Corel Photo Paint, you do what, what you do in your respective programs. But of course, I have a Windows, so I click ru Ruler Setup after right click. And then we go to Grid. And you know I said resolution 150 by 150. When it comes to Document Grid, uh, it follows the resolution that I said, of course. But we're going to change that now to not the resolution itself, but the grid. Because you saw the grid was it was not much of a grid and it was a very few grids. Uh, you're going to see what I mean in just a couple of seconds. And I'm also going to use snap to grid because that's some, something that's really good to have for a certain kind of uh, pixel art that we can, we can work with. Here's also the color for the grid. It's going to be this color if you want to change that you can always do that and the opacity of course and then click OK so suddenly we see a lot of paint here in the middle but if you zoom in we see a lot of pixels and that's what, what we're going to use now as a, as a complimentary video to this video you could say you could argue I've made a speed painting video so you can go look for the speed painting video on how I created an image that you're soon going to see which is an astro astronaut. So search for pixel art speed painting video, something like that. We also have to think about the, uh, the pen tool, the brushes that we're going to use. And I recommend that you're using something called the Quick Doodler. Quick Doodler usually comes when you start working with it uh, with a blurry nib. We're going to change that to a solid. Now it's um, the size is 50. So we can go down in size by using control and shift key on the keyboard and go down to one. So we mirror the pixels here. You're going to see something that we don't want. And that is if we open now the, um, 
the object stock area and then create a new object. If I'm going to start, start to draw here now, we see this anti-aliasing. That's really, really good when we're working with concept art or regular illustration and so on. But we really don't want that now. And that's why we go to the property bar. So when you selected the paint tool, you'll go to the property bar and you see the anti-aliasing button here. You're going to disable that now and then you're going to see how much better it is in terms of pixel art. So now you see this what we want. We want sharp pixels. So this other one that we first started with, that's not what we want. So we're going to remove that. And also is that we can always work with one pixel, so to speak, or we can have uh, more. So you can just go up and down here on the keyboard or using these um, uh, fields here and add any uh, size that you want. Also, often when, when you start photo paint from the first time, these are usually selected like this. I would say that those are fantastic in itself, but when you're working with pixels, just disable them all, and that would actually get it be much better when we start drawing. Also, I want to show you here. Here's a reference image that I've done, uh, and I'm going to copy that now. And you saw that I clicked on something here to the right, and what I, I'm going to show you again because. Uh, I'm going to copy this background and to be able to do that I'm going to click the this icon here with the double kind of squares or sheets or whatever you want to see it as. That will create the background into a standard object In in that way we're going to be able to copy it, go over to this new image and then of course paste. And now the image will be here in front of us. This is a really really large image now. So what we're going to do is to down sample it so to speak by dragging it by using the shift key and simply drag it down in size so we can start working with it and um, I've made this a sketch uh, with a pen and pencil uh, before so I know more or less how big I want to have it on the uh, the actual image here so I recommend that because uh, depending on what kind of version of um, um, I don't know why I said version, but anyway, but if if we work here now with uh, this image, what we want to do is to to keep it as I said in the in the correct size already, so we don't have to rotate and and uh, resize because that could actually add some anti-aliasing, which we don't want. Uh, you see that it says hundred up here. I'm gonna actually add um, remove and go down to fifty. An opacity here that I'm changing over here now is the transparency of it and I like that. We don't have to have the grid viewable but I'm gonna keep it for a while and then create a new object and then we're gonna you see that we have the black paint here so this way we can just start drawing this image here and this video is not going to show the whole process when I how I create the image from from beginning to end and that's why I made this um, um, complementary, if you like, uh, speed painting video where I show all the steps in very high speed, but still you'll get the hang of it and see how I worked my way through it. Um, you saw that I was, um, now I'm zooming in. Usually that's much better if you want to make um, details to a pixel art because the more you zoomed out, so to speak, the more difficult it is to catch these. Uh, uh, pixels of the grid, but because we chosen the uh, snap to grid, it will actually help us to um, find those areas where we want these pixels to be. Another thing that I do, and you can choose what works for you, of course, is when it comes to things like this, drawing the hand, what, what I usually do is that I squeeze my eyes a little bit, so it actually allow me to have a more natural flow that I'm used to when I'm drawing images otherwise, which are, which is not uh, pixel art, so to speak. Um, you don't have to squeeze your eyes, of course. Uh, if you now did squeeze your eyes for this video, you can stop doing that, and you'll see that it goes perfectly okay to to draw without squeezing your eyes. But but sometimes it 
at least helps me in uh, getting the flow. Um, so if I'm now squeeze when I'm doing this arm here, for instance, and the elbow and the up to the shoulder here, somehow it helps me squeezing the eyes. Um, removes a lot of detail, so to speak, that the sharp pixels show me. And then we're gonna just work like this. Um, I'm just gonna quickly draw this guy. And um, what I've done when I've created this image is, and you see that especially in the video that, that I mentioned, this speed painting video, um, I'm just using a small set of um, colors and um, and then I paint a lot of pixels individually to make the stars that you will and so on that you will see in the end of this image. And what I also do is that I'm using uh, multiple objects. So for instance, if we now, let's see if, oh, sorry for that. Um, so if we now draw the foot here or the shoe and something like that here, and let's pretend that this image is actually finished here. We just go to the object number two here, which is the reference image and just throw that away. Um, and now of course I can just continue drawing like, like that. And um, what I now would do um, would be to just take a, a color uh, and just um, take something that's more black blue and put that on a separate object and then another object on top of that working with these multiple objects and using white to quickly fill large areas with a large nib something like that and then you go down in size and you see how all these these pixel edges exactly what we want when we're working with pixel art that's what's give the uniqueness to pixel art so this is something that we really don't want to be antalyzed or smoothed out or anything like that this is actually what we're going for so i'm going to show you the finished image that i've when that i used for the video i'm always referring to because when we when we come this far and we've finished an image and so on, um, that's when we want to go for print, for example, because that's the idea of this um, of this tutorial is that how do we take an image that j basically is this small, and how can we make that larger, not just on screen but on paper, on uh, big posters, on what have you. What you then have to do is to go to image and you have to resample and resample image and going up in size like I said previously is something that we would never I would never tell you to make if you create a, an image and illustrations or working with a photo generally and say that you would um, resample an image this brutally that I'm now going to do but this works perfectly just because we've been working with pixels in that small image sizes. That's why it works so good. So in the in the resample dialog, which is um, the one that we see here now, choose nearest neighbor. And don't stay with B by Cupid. We can, I can show you how it looks so you'll see the difference. And from 250 pixels, I'm going to go up to two. 1500 um, and then I'm gonna change the resolution I don't have to but I'm gonna do that anyway oh sorry that was a little bit too big and with staying with bicubic and then just click OK and you're gonna see how it looks like it especially shows uh, if we are working with uh, small details like this one here it's totally not use usable it's uh, not fun at all and you see what happens here in the various areas we don't really don't want that so we go back here so to keep the image exactly like we see here 
and keep it as it is when we want to go up in, resample it is to choose nearest neighbor and now we're going to see what the magic happens and like i said this only works when you're working in this small size of the for pixel art so nearest neighbor let's keep 150 dpi we don't have to change that because it's going to be the same result here now so nearest neighbor instead of the bicupic click ok and then you're going to see how much better it's going to look if i would go to print and send it to one of my you see how beautiful it's it's beautiful it's sharp it's perfect if i would now send it to a to a printer for instance who would maybe print it on a on a sheet of paper or something else for a car or a subway station um, across the uh, you know when when you're looking and standing and waiting for your metro train or something like that or in a paper i would maybe go with 150 dpi but probably 300 dpi but it would keep this beautiful sharpness so that's the magic working with smaller sizes and then before you go to send it to your client you go to resample you choose nearest neighbor and you click OK and you have your perfect image. And what I also did for my video, my speed painting video, was that I also added text. And I also went with a, a type font that is more in line with the style. And then I simply chose the text tool, and um, which is excellent in Corel Photo Paint as well. I hope you enjoyed this little video and that it will help you in being creative using and creating a lot of pixel art have a great day thanks for watching